Boker Tov, good morning, Olive Tree. Thank you for joining us this morning for our time of devotions and prayer together. Uh, trust that you had a restful night and are enjoying God's grace in these very strange days. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you or reintroduce to you our beloved brother, Scott Schwartz, who's serving with Life and Messiah in the Holy Land, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, Scott is going to be sharing a word from the word with us this morning from Matthew. So take it away, Scott. Amen. Good morning, Olives. Good to be with you. Um, let's just pray real quick, and then we'll look at the word. <clears throat> Father, thank you for uh, this morning. And uh, we just come to you, Lord. We love you. We thank you for... Uh, your graciousness to each and every one of us. And uh, we thank you for your word, which is uh, an anchor to our souls, a comfort to our spirits, Lord. I pray that you would minister to us, encourage us, draw us close to your heart this morning as we hear from your heart. And we ask this all in Yeshua's name. Amen. So I'm going to, we're going to look at. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 this morning, so if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be looking at verse 25 through the end of the chapter. And I've, I like to give titles to messages, this is really a 10 minute devotion, but um, after looking at the passage, I've kind of titled this devotion. COVID-19 heart check, the COVID-19 heart check. So let's, uh, I'll read and follow along with me, Matthew chapter six, verse 25 to the end of the chapter. I'm reading out of the ESV. Yeshua read from that, by the way. <laughs> so it says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anx anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Great, great passage of scripture and very relevant, I believe, uh, for our lives today. And um, going back before we look at this section, it's, it's good to ramp up here to find the context. This obviously Yeshua's Sermon on the Mound. And this, we're in the middle of his message. And um, before he gets into being, commanding us or encouraging us not to be anxious, he gives us a heart check. And there, there's four things here in chapter six, um, four areas that he wants to draw our attention to. And I'll just go over them real quickly. He, he wants to look at our giving, our praying, our fasting, and our possessions. So he talks in chapter six about just those things are giving, how we are to pray, how we are to fast. 
and how are we to handle our possessions, verse 19 through 24. And then we get to the meat of this section here um, in verse 25. Um, So here it says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And again, he's drawing our our attention to our own hearts in these four areas um, in this passage of Scripture. He's really getting into why do we give, how do we pray, our heart posture when we fast, and our possessions. And it kind of culminates in what would naturally, when we're looking at these things, our wealth, our possessions, how we pray, our heart. So do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, about your body and what you will put on. And I I find it beautiful here in this passage that he's covering the essentials here. He's covering the essentials of life. Like outside of shelter, he doesn't mention shelter and a house, but he mentions all the basics, food, clothing, and water, what we will drink. And the reason this passage means so much to me is I don't know how you guys feel, but you know, three weeks ago, everything started ramping up. Right. And my mind went to a place that it shouldn't go. You know, how long are we going to do this for? And, and we were still learning about the, the virus. Um, how is it going to attack us? Is it for people with pre you know, conditions or is it for the young? Is it, kids going to die or middle-aged people going to die. And my mind went everywhere. And the word here, worry, where he he speaks in this section, one commentator says it's being pulled in every direction. Worry means to be pulled in a thousand different directions. And if you're like me, you probably can say, yes, that was like me, Scott. I was pulled in every direction. And God drew me to this passage. And uh, there's a beauty in this in this passage, he sums it up at the end. Do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. Today uh, is sufficient. The the trouble for today is sufficient. And, um, you know, I thought about it this morning as I was having my coffee. It's an hour behind you guys are it's 844, right? So let's just say we go to bed at 11 o'clock this evening. Um, That's 14 hours. So you know, we're in this for the long haul, right? It's week, weeks upon weeks. But if you were to tell me, just handle the next 14 hours, I can do that, right? I can handle the next 14 hours. Um, if you were to tell me this is going to go for three more weeks, you know, then I might freak out. And I just love how the Lord centers us through his, this teaching here by saying, do not be anxious about your life. And the key things of our lives are taken care of. Um, It really is a beautiful thing. Um, When you strip life away, he's really taking care of our basics. And that's, that's really my encouragement for us this morning is to, you know, center ourselves in the moment and uh, look back in your own life. You know, I looked back and I meditated. Have I ever, been without clothing? No. Have I ever been without food? No. Have I ever been without drink? No. And uh, if we just focus on today, we're going to make it, you know? And in the beginning, when I was really anxious, that really got me through. Like, before we knew how this was really going to unfold, I was staying in the moment. And uh, so back to the text here. I love how Yeshua gives us earthly illustrations of heavenly realities. Um, He's telling us to look at the birds of the air. You know, he's saying, look around you, open your eyes, look at the things that I have given to you in life, my creation. And then he says, consider. So he's going to, it's, it's a, how much more? It's a, how much more? Look at the birds of the air. Look at the lilies of the field. Are you much more value than the birds? God feeds the birds. He will feed you, right? So 
All nature depends on God and God never fails. So God clothes the grass of the field. He will clothe you. So if you ever doubt about that, just Yeshua is saying, I want you, I'm going to give you an illustration right in front of your face. You can pick up the dirt with your hands. You can pick up the grass and feel it and touch it and see it. I'm going to show you the birds of the air. We just put a bird feeder out front on our window. And um, we had a cardinal. We had a blue jay visit us. And I don't know what they are, little finches. We had about six of them up on the windowsill. And uh, again, boom, right there with my own eyes. God's feeding them. He's using us to feed them. But he gives us those earthly examples uh, to reassure us. He would say, how much more? You, you and me are more valuable than the birds of the air. And he feeds them. If he feeds them, I see them. They're right out there right now, getting a little morning snack. And uh, he's going to feed us. Um, so therefore, as you see these things before you, do not be anxious. Um, verse 32, for the Gentiles seek after all these things, right? They're worried about money. They're worried about possessions. They're worried about what will I eat? And Yeshua says in verse 32, for the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. If you go back to the beginning of chapter six, uh, in the Lord's prayer, um, in verse seven, it says, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will, they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. And again in verse 32, and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So the prescription for this anxiety, this COVID-19 heart check, is to know that do not let your heart be anxious. Do not be fearful. Do not worry. Again, as I said earlier, look back on your life. Have you ever been without clothing or food or drink? You would probably say, I've always had those things. He's been faithful. Stay in the moment. Be present in your today. Because tomorrow isn't here yet. Right? Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So... That's my encouragement for us today. If you get anxious, just look outside, look at the grass, look at the birds, and be reminded that he takes care of those things. And you and me are much more valuable than those things. He will provide and tend for us and care for us and uh, shepherd us. Amen. Thank, thank you, Scott.